Because I was thinking we could hook it into the where the wheel is mm -hmm. up the front, but then we can make a small piece mm -hmm. in the back end of metal yeah. steel or some stuff. So it just hooks over the wheel. So you're not just walking at the end, mm -hmm. and that way it'll provide enough tension. Yeah. So you can't use that spring, which I doubt. Because it's, it's about uh, an eight inches long or something. It's close to me. Yeah, yeah. I've done this before.
things rise for the breathing and call for the name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Praise God. Jesus the Christ, who was crucified and risen from the dead, now sits at the right hand of God Almighty. And Jesus will come again, bringing the fullness of God's kingdom. Praise be to God. Remembering the Word made flesh, we gather in the light of Christ, of which this candle is a sign. Astounding and mysterious God, we come before you this day as witnesses to Christ's ascension from this realm to the heavenly kingdom. We stand in awe and wonder at what we hear and see. Open the eyes of our hearts to see the power and truth of your words and give us courage and joy that we might be witnesses your eternal love, through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Hear us and speak to us, O God, as we join ourselves together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Jennifer and Mark and Nora and, and their families. And um, next week we have.
have a, another baptism on Pentecost with a, another family, and a third one that's booked in July. And we've had announcements of births in our church and extended church family, so we celebrate with all these young families and give thanks to God uh, for these wonderful additions in their lives. We're very grateful to share in that happiness with them. Um, the service this past week, I had a service at the Wellesley Residence on Wednesday. It was nice to see all of those folk there, too. Um, they, uh, they were very, very pleasant to, to speak with and to talk with and find out what they were doing. Um, they did tell me that, um, that they are without a bus driver right now. So if uh, they're not able to make it here to church, then you can see that uh, if, if you have the ability to pick them up and give them a lift, I'm sure it would be appreciated. But if you happen to be a bus driver, you happen to have the license to allow you to drive one of those things. I think the Wellesley could use those skills. So um, I'm just letting you know that there's, there's availability there, and uh, I'm sure it will be very much appreciated. This coming week, uh, June the 1st, on Wednesday, uh, there is the UCW June Luncheon. Um, it's at 1230 here at the church, and all the ladies in the congregation are invited to attend. Uh, next week, which is Pentecost, it's also a Communion Sunday, it's also a Baptismal Sunday, it is the last week of Sunday School also. So we thank uh, those who have helped in Sunday School, thank you Catherine and the family and so on, um, and others, and so we, uh, we uh, celebrate what has been available to young families uh, through Sunday School in the past uh, year. Um, we'll also be saying goodbye to a couple, um, so it, it, it's, you know, Linda and Elaine's last Sunday here, and if um, you're thinking about, uh, about whether you should come to church or not, um, remember that also, because um, we have the opportunity to say goodbye to them as they move to London. Um, Friday, June the 3rd, is the uh, deadline to apply to the United Church of Canada Region of Nakanaka um, Bursaries for CJEP, that's a university. Um, so if you need me to give you a letter of reference, or if you need forms, uh, forms are on the board, the board, by the way, and descriptions of that, but Friday is the deadline for application. It's, it's very easy for us because we live next door, it's just a machine where they have to go, but if you need a letter from me, please let me know as soon as possible so I can make sure that you have it in time to send it. Um, if uh, you need me during the week, um, if you need pastoral care, please call me on my cellular phone. The number is on the church answering machine. It says something like, um, in the event of an emergency, and you need pastoral care, well, it doesn't have to be an emergency. If there's something else, call that number. That's what it's there for. It's the best way to reach me, and as I told you before, unfortunately, um, there is a, an answering machine that's set up at home, but we have no home phone um, that gets hooked up to it. So please use the <laughs> cellular phone, because marvel of marvels, it's cheaper for us to have all the services that Bell supplies, but um, it will cost a lot more to, to have the answering machine and the phone turned off. So um, that's why it's there. Uh, please call the cellular, that's what it's there for. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? Oh, someone must be calling my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? God has given us the gift of faith. Through this gift, we see all people as God's own. Respond to God's generous love that we may love one another as God has loved us. Let us share this love as we bring our gifts and offerings to God this day. After the music, we will rise to the doxology and dedicate our gifts to God.
these gifts we also lift up to you, signs of our humanity, of our gifts given. Bless these gifts and use them and give them to you now in the world for your sake. In Christ's name we pray. Young people, have you ever had to wait for something? Maybe you had to wait for a friend in order to play, or, or maybe you had to wait for the coming of your birthday, or maybe you had to wait for school to end at the end of the year. Was waiting hard? Or was waiting easy? When Jesus was with his chosen apostles, Luke talked about what was happening in Jesus' life. Jesus was with those apostles and he gave them this command. Don't leave Jerusalem. Instead, wait here for the gift I told you about, the one my father promised you. Remember, just 
John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with God's Spirit. Waiting. John was a good student and a good helper at school, but now it was late May, and she was waiting for school to hurry up and end. All she could think about was the beach and vacation and time to sleep in. Summertime was going to be great. She was waiting. Joan's friend Danielle was in a year-round private school, and she was just coming back from her holiday. And after six weeks being off school, she was anxious to get back to class. She couldn't wait to get back to classes. And so two of them were both waiting, waiting for very different things. We wait for things to happen, young people. Like Joan and Danielle, the early Christian people, they waited. They waited for Jesus to come and reign over everyone. The apostles even asked Jesus, when will you come again? And Jesus said, that decision is up to God. But Jesus did promise to send us a helper, the Holy Spirit, while we're waiting. God's Spirit gives us the courage to be ourselves and to tell everyone we believe in God. God's Spirit helps us understanding ourselves and understanding others. And God's Spirit gives us the wisdom to make good decisions and to give good advice. The Holy Spirit is the power who helps us to become better people. The Holy Spirit is with us. As we wait for Jesus to come again, let us ask the Holy Spirit to help us to grow. Remember, Jesus promised us the Spirit. You think about that as you wait. Perhaps you're waiting for school to end, or you're waiting for something else. The waiting is a good thing. And we all sing the next hymn, number 189, verses 1 and 3 and 5 only. <laughs> Until the day when he was taken up to heaven. 
after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come again in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great King over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with a shout of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a song. God is King over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God, he is highly exalted. These readings are the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, 44, and 53. Then he spoke to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. Long, long ago now, I was visiting a patient at Hamlin Psych Hospital, where I was learning in the chaplaincy. And the patients were our teachers. Emotions are very close to the surface, and theological reflection goes on all the time there. And I remember this 40 something year old man who was quite pleasant, had longish hair, a mustache, stubble on his chin, and often he had this mischievous look on his face. And he was there in his bathrobe. He approached me because he had a burning question since I was with pastoral services. And he was completely serious. He said to me, uh, that story, that story about Jesus walking on the water, I've always wondered, how did he do that? Styrofoam pontoons? And he seemed to try his very best to, to understand this as he could. And i got to tell you, it wasn't the question that I was expecting. Uh, usually I, I got questions like, you know, what are the side effects of my medication, or, or um, questions about when chapel services were, or, or could I take somebody out for a walk because I had a key and they didn't. So this was not the question that I was anticipating, but I did my best at explaining that this story was highly symbolic. 
saying something more about who Jesus is, rather than offering explanation of how it was done. And that what it meant was that Jesus had power over the sea, but the sea back then, they believed, was a fearful place, a place of chaos and danger, and Jesus had mastery over that experience. Oh, he said, I never knew that. I said, think of it as being more like a poem, not a textbook, or an instruction manual. And that seemed to help. You know, we have responses to mysterious things, things we don't understand. And, and symbols are part of that. Symbolic expressions are part of that. You know, sometimes we, we, we want things to be simple and easy, and so we put a bow on it for the Order, but, but we live with great complexity as human beings. And stories of faith and our, our rituals associated with faith, they have great symbolic power in them that, that lift us and help us. I mean, think about, uh, think about communion. Think about baptism. You know, we shared in baptism last week. Is it about washing? Is it about birth? Is it about new birth? Is it about community? Is it about the coming of the Spirit? It's about all of those things. All at the same time. It's highly symbolic. And symbols are like that. They're, they're not just literal things. They mean many things all at the same time, depending on how we look at them in the light. And they are mysterious in that way. So how do we relate the mystery? We allow them to intrigue us. That's what we do with the mystery. These are mysterious things that carry many meanings simultaneously when we see them in different ways whenever we look at them. The ascension is highly symbolic. It carries many things in it all at the same time. According to St. Augustine, it dates all the way back to the time of the Apostles. And it's in the writing of St. John Chrysostom in the late 300s. And it's in the, the affirmations of the Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed also. The ascension is highly symbolic. It's an ancient thing. It's a powerful thing. And it's a powerful feast that we share in if we take it literally, we'll end up asking how Jesus did it. Was he on a Russian rocket or something? Was he up, up and away in that beautiful balloon? But we missed the point of it. Symbolically, in the ascension, we have Jesus going back to where he came from, heaven. We have our humanity, scarred and imperfect as it is, being received into the realm and the person of God, acceptable as it is, Apparently, perfection is not required in heaven. Jesus is damaged by life, scars and all, hands, feet, side, and head, finds a place in God. We also have two completely Jewish aspects of the symbol. The ascension is also the, the triumphal act that, that crowns both the royal and priestly ministers of Messiah. David's heir ascends to reign, and the great high priest completes the presentation of the atoning sacrifice. First, that royal part. The ascension appears to be a fulfillment of the prophetic vision of Daniel, where the Son of Man, surrounded by clouds, approaches the throne of the Ancient of Days and is given dominion of an everlasting kingdom. The ascension is the triumphal coronation of this messianic king. Jesus has done what good kings in the ancient world were expected to do. He saved his people from their enemies. And now he makes his ascent to the throne. Just as the Davidic kings of old made their ascent in Jerusalem after successful campaigns. And having accomplished these kingly acts, Jesus approaches the ancient of days and is crowned with splendor and honor. And although we await his return, along with his full and final manifestations of his reign, 
that rain has already begun. It's already started here now in our lives. And now that he's on the throne seat of the right hand of God, the signs expected of that messianic age are understood to be fulfilled before our very eyes. The Spirit has been poured out, the nation will begin to turn their hearts to worship of God. But Jesus' ascension is also connected with the priestly work of the Messiah. Early Christian people, they believed that Jesus' death on the cross was a sacrifice of atonement, an act whereby sin is fully and completely and finally forgiven. Coming from the context of the New Testament culture, it, it, it would have struck most Jewish believers as oddly incomplete, though, to say that the cross was all there was to Jesus' ritual of sacrifice. Anybody in the ancient world would know that the penitent needed one more step, a further step, in the ritual of atonement. The sacrifice given also requires the high priest to bear the sacrificial blood into the presence of God. So the parallel was the annual ritual of the Day of Atonement. The sacrifice for people's sin was also made on the great altar outside the temple doors. But that's only the first part of the ritual. The Jewish years, the claim that the crucifixion alone could be the sacrifice of atonement would have sounded like saying that that sacrifice could happen on the altar but was left incomplete. So what's the next step in the ritual? The high priest has to take the blood of the sacrifice and ascend the steps of the temple and enter into the sanctuary of God, surrounded by the billowing clouds of incense, ascending to the Holy of Holies. The high priest would step into that cloud of, of incense and vanish from the sight of those watching throngs in the temple courts, and then would proceed into the Holy of Holies. And there, in the presence of God, the high priest would present the sacrifice, the blood of the sacrifice, completing that ritual of atonement, interceding for the people. And then they would emerge, coming back down through the cloud of incense, the same way that the crowd saw them leave, bearing the assurance of salvation to the people of God. Luke writes in Acts that the two men in white robes had said to those observing this Jesus who has ascended from you, who will come in the same way as you saw him go. And there are those words in the Gospel of Luke about repentance and forgiveness. They're very powerful words. The book of Hebrews describes what Jesus did in his heavenly descent. Hebrews paints a picture of the scene enacted when Jesus made his entrance into the presence of God, drawing on the day of atonement imagery to portray Jesus as both offering and offerer. The Holy of Holies was a, an earthly representation of the heavenly reality, and Jesus enters into the heart of that reality with the very presence of God. And the implication is that ascension was the next necessary step in the ritual after the cross. The completed sacrifice has to be followed by another step in the process, which was bearing the sacrifice into the Holy of Holies, the place of God's presence. There are priestly symmetries in the portrayals of the Ascension. The Ascension is preceded by a period of 40 days, just like the Day of Atonement, rabbinic Jewish tradition. Before his ascent, Jesus lifts his hands to bless his disciples, and then goes up into the presence of God, which is the same set of actions that Aaron and the high priest performed before entering the tabernacle to complete the first great ritual sacrifice. This adds layers of meaning to our current period of history. This day of atonement ritual wasn't just a matter of going up into the temple of God's presence, but also coming back again. The present time of Jesus' absence is the period of his active priestly service as he continues to intercede for us in the presence of God. And so the, the promised second coming of Jesus is not some future event that stands on its own, but it's the long-awaited culmination of everything that he has already been doing, foreshadowed in the ancient priestly ritual, the disappearance and return words of that ascension, 
it ceased to become something that is odd or surprising, because this is what was expected of the Messiah to do. So for Jesus to be the true messianic sovereign, the prophesied one would come to humanity's, uh, defeat humanity's enemies and returns to claim his throne, he has to ascend. And for Jesus to be the great high priest, he has to complete the ritual by bringing the sacrifice into God's presence through ascension. The ascension is highly symbolic. It's many things all at the same time, a symbol that holds it all together, a, a mystery of God. It invites intrigue and living with questions and, and learning and wisdom. We don't always deal very well with things that are complicated or complex or multi-layered or mysterious. Sometimes it's a lot easier to say something like, it's just this, or it's only that. But that's not how life is for us. To have faith is to live with our questions and find a way to hold our paradoxes together. The symbolic language and action does that for us. And it's what wise adults find a way to do in the journey of faith with the direction of, of the love and truth of God's own spirit. So Jesus ascends and reigns in our lives. Jesus ascends and our humanity is lifted up and given dignity and a place with God. Jesus ascends and God understands us. Jesus ascends and his priestly work continues, the ministry of reconciliation in which we wait. Jesus ascends and the ritual is completed and will return to proclaim forgiveness to all in this new age. And Jesus ascends. It's Let's bow in a few moments of prayer. Beloved God, one of the watchwords for this day is wait. Wait until we're full of power from on high. Wait until the Spirit comes. Wait. Sometimes we want to just get out and do something. Sometimes we even want to get out and serve you and do something for you. Sometimes we're itching to move and be about your work, O oh God. And you call us to wait until the Spirit comes. Sometimes we're afraid of waiting because sometimes it means we might lose our enthusiasm because we might actually have to think of a ramification or risk. Give us courage and strength to prepare our spirits for your service. And help us to know in, in powerful ways that you are with us always, opening our hearts and minds to your work and your will for us. As we have gathered this day and hear of Jesus' ascension, make us ready for your service. Help us to trust in all that Jesus said. But a time is coming when our witness will be crucial, when our words and actions will reveal your love and your healing power. Make us ready to love it. We ask this in the name of Christ. This day, as we gather here, we pray for many. We pray for Hudson, Holden, and Rita, Joan and Marge and Mark and Jim and family, and Mike and Elizabeth and Mark and family, and Harry and Bill and Denise, and folk at the Wellesley, and young folk who are trying to do their best with their families. We pray for people who are in Texas, Uvalda, indeed in all those places where violence and sorrow and pain has been caused by difficulty of 
failures of person and systems and so on. We also pray for people in Buffalo, and the people who are in Ukraine. We pray for people who are still without electricity as the result of a storm last week. And the families of the 11 people killed here in Ontario and here in Quebec. Bless them in their struggles. Bless them in their moments of joy. Bless them with moments of health. Bless them with good company. They might live with love and courage as your very own. We think about war and conflict in our world. We know much about it because we see it on television. We see news reels also of times gone by. We have a problem. It never goes away. Remind us of the peace that you give. Help us to limit ourselves when we can so that things are better for all. We pray about language problems and cultural problems here that keep erupting. Help us to remember that we are all people, loved and precious to you. We pray about affordability issues and the concern that it brings to everyone's lives. Bring your peace, but also please bring us awareness. Awareness of how we're interconnected with each other about the power of greed in our living. Speak to those issues and help us to discuss those issues honestly and to find ways through them, oh God. We pray that you would give wise spirits to governments, and wise spirits to those who lead in business, and wise spirits to those who live in community with each other. May your spirit be upon us, O oh God, this day. Use us redemptively this week as you answer these prayers that we bring, these ones that have, have been spoken, but also the ones that are unspoken and no less important than in our hearts and souls and minds as we gather this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn today is number 211, Crown Him with Me.
prepare your hearts and your spirits to receive power from on high. Go into God's world in confidence, offer healing and hope to all you meet. And go in peace, and may God's peace be with you. Go with the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the